In this exercise, we are given two random variables, y and z, and we have to compute and explain some stuff about the covariance. And part A, we have to derive an expression for the covariance in terms of standard actuarial functions. S starting with that, let us recall what the covariance is of two random variables. The covariance of y and z is equal to the expectation of the product minus the product of the expectations. So we have this expression. And if we now substitute the, the definitions of y and z, then we have that y is equal to small a bar tx times z equal to v to the power tx. So this a bar represents the annuities for a whole life of insurance up to the time of death. And v was the discount factor. And then here we do the same thing. We also plug it in, obtaining this expectation times the expectation of v t x. And then we have to think about how to rewrite this in standard actuarial notation. Well, the, we know that this uh, a bar tx, so this one, so this one is, is equal to, can be rewritten as, as 1 minus vtx over delta where delta is the force of uh, interest. So, and, and Vtx is just Vtx. And further, we, can, we know the expectation of y in, in terms of actuarial, in, uh, actuarial notation, and it is denoted as a bar, a bar x. And similarly for uh, this expectation of vtx this was given in chapter 4 in insurance benefits and it's a bar capital a bar x all right now we we still need to compute the first expectation so we, we can take out delta to get 1 minus vtx times uh, times vtx and then minus this a x ax bar and now what do we see here well this is this is equal to well let me write, write down one more step so we can we can write out these this, this product so we have expectation of tx vtx um, minus the expectation of v t x squared and now this this is uh, equal to the exp so this first one is just the expectation which well we saw just now is just capital a bar x so this expectation of z and then minus the second moment and the second moment of vtx was denoted by this 2 in front. Now, one last step for this, this small, this a bar x. We know that this is equal to 1 minus a bar x, capital A bar x, over delta. Again, because this is, uh, we assume continuous uh, variable immediately on that, and it's, uh, continuously compounded, so that's why this delta occurs. And then we have 1 minus ax bar over delta times a x bar. And finally, if we so we can take out delta from all terms, and then we have ax bar minus 2ax minus 1 
minus 1 times ax, so that's minus ax, plus, because you have minus times minus, so be careful here, plus ax squared. And what does this finally give us? It gives us um, 1 over delta times ax bar squared minus 2 x and this is the answer to the part a now for the second part we have to show that this is actually negative so we, we the conclusion of part a was this is equal to the 1 over delta a bar x squared minus 2 a x now for part b we have to show this is negative and we know well, we know that this this expression here in A, this is about the, the first moment squared minus the second moment. And one thing that we know from probability is that the variance of a random variable relates these two things. So we know, we know that the variance of some random variable, so let's say z, because this is you will see why. So this is the variance of uh, Vtx, right? By definition of by definition of z, which equals the second moment. So Vtx squared minus the first moment. The first moment squared. And but this is simply well the second moment is two ax bar. And the first moment squared is ax bar squared. Moreover, we know that the variance of uh, this random variable, the variance is always positive. A negative variance does not make sense. So if if this is true, if this is true, then we know that um, then we know from part A that. Uh, then if we switch these two, so if we have ax, if we have the first moment squared and we subtract the second moment, then of course this must be negative because it's just flipped. And this is the answer to part B. Now for part C, the question is to explain this in words. Well, let's think about what the statement says. So, if the covariance is negative, then it, it means that they are negatively correlated. So, suppose, suppose, suppose Tx increases. So, if Tx increases, it should have opposite effects on the random variables y and z. Starting with y, we know that y will also increase. So how do we know that? Y represents the value of the annuity that is paid continuously up until the time of death. So as long as you are alive. Now if the X, the your future lifetime increases, then you will you will be paid for a longer period. Therefore the value of Y will also increase. But for z, however, z will, will decrease. So z will actually decrease. And to see why that is true, z is the discounted value of one euro paid in the future. When is it paid? It is paid immediately upon death, which is dx. So if you live longer, then the euro is paid out later. And therefore, you have a longer period that you have to discount, and there is longer for your interest to um, compound and to gain value. Therefore, you have to discount for longer, and it will decrease the value. And therefore, these have opposite effects, as we see. So the uh, covariance is negative as a conclusion which solves the entire exercise.